Well, yeah, so to, to, to talk about that and a little more, we've got uh, Mr. Shegun Ajayi there, who is the Director General, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. He joins us from Durban, where that is going on. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today on the program. Morning, and thank you for having me. Okay, so go ahead and give us a mood of what, what uh, it is like there. Now that there's this talk about making after work, the Af leaders are talking about that. There's always been a huge conversation about inter-African trade and then the advantages it confers on Nigeria. So tell us, how is that panning out at the moment? Well, thank you again. I, I think uh, one of the major pillars of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is this trade fair, which brings together uh, companies and businesses from all over Africa to showcase what they have to engage in business deals and to generally have information about what is available. Uh, we remember that nobody really told us not to trade amongst ourselves. But the fact that we do not have a platform for engaging each other, the fact that we do not have information about what is available, the fact that we do not know what cross-border value chains could be built, uh, had been largely responsible for the low level of trade in the continent. So with this kind of fair, it's possible to have all of us under the same roof, literally, and then to get to talk to each other and be aware. As you, as you rightly reported earlier, we have uh, more than a thousand exhibitors from all over uh, Africa. Last year, deals worth about 32 billion was struck. The ambition now is to get it to 40 billion. We also have people discussing the infrastructure challenge, what is needed to be able to boost uh, intra-African trade. So generally speaking, the mood is high, uh, it's just day three. And there are so many conversations taking place in different uh, segments, uh, addressing specific sectoral issues, addressing governance issues, addressing non-tariff barrier issues that we know we need to overcome in order for the AFCFTA to work. So I, I think uh, the, the mood you get here is that Africa is on the move and we are, uh, this is a good step in integrating the uh, continental economy. Well. The interesting thing about all that you have said is that at least we have all realized the fact that Africa needed to trade more. Um, data puts intra-Africa trade to by something in the region of 16% of all uh, that is done. And from understanding available, uh, the projection of the AFCFTA is that it will increase intra-Africa trade by at least 33%. But since we have identified that we hadn't been trading, and you have said, okay, maybe it's because we didn't have a platform, uh, I'm wondering if that's the only constraint or inhibition you see. What are those things that had hindered or mitigated intra-Africa trade hitherto? Because, I mean, permit me to speak like a layman. Isn't it easier to buy from my next door neighbor than to buy from afar? Okay, yes, thank you very much. And I think this is a very important question you have asked. And that, that was uh, majorly the reason why man advised government to, to be circumspective in signing on to AFCFT. There are so many challenges. For instance, for you to export uh, a product from some African country, you first have to take it to Europe, then bring it back to, to the African country you are exporting to. The sheer cost of logistics will make it uncompetitive because uh, my brother on the streets of Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire is not going to buy uh, EMSO paracetamol because it is made by uh, uh, a, a sister in Nigeria. He will buy because when you put it side by side with uh, an analgesic from Brazil or from uh, Paris, it's going to be cheaper or it's going to be more effective. So at the end of the day, uh, the issue of cost in the marketplace will be very important. There is also the issue of cross-border challenges. Some of them are even non-tariff. So it's not enough for you to bring down the tariffs, 90% of the tariff to zero. If you bring it down to, to zero and it's not possible for you to move uh, easily, many of our exhibitors that we brought from Nigeria, for instance, found it very, very difficult 
to get visas to South Africa. If you cannot move persons, how will you be able to move goods? So we have to break down all those barriers to trade. There should, there's no reason why we shouldn't have one African passport. That as an African, you should be able to move around. If I have business deals in, in a place, and it took me, it took us up about 24 hours to get here. So there has to be a, a conversation as to addressing those issues. Again, you have the issue of, uh, uh, I mean, absence of, uh, of uh, marine trade among us, because we are all surrounded by water. Yet, ships do not find it uh, economically viable to take goods from Nigeria to South Africa, for instance, because you have to uh, be mindful that there are some constant costs that the ship owner has to bear. And if you look at the volume of trade, it may not be uh, competitive, I mean, to, uh, I mean, to engage in such a trade. So there are so many issues. And like I told you, at this second intra-African trade fair, it's addressing most of it. There has been conversations. We attended one yesterday about the automobile uh, industry. There are more than 2,500 parts to a car. And you can imagine if you build value chains across Africa, we should be able to have hubs where automobiles will be, uh, will be manufactured. So they are addressing issues on sector basis. And I think that is the direction to go. Uh, sometimes, I mean, one wonders if maybe the body language of the leadership there, governments, is anything to go by, because the, there usually is that conversation as to uh, the place of the private sector and the commitment of government to ensure that they bridge that gap and ensure that these kind of things are not that difficult for us to implement. So from what you see around you there, do you see su sufficient push and participation from the private sector with government opening the door that to allow them drive some of these processes such that it can indeed work properly. And I will say I've seen, because I understand exactly where you are going. But honestly, there's a concern. Uh, we've had speeches. Uh, in fact, there was a reference to Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana when he said more than 50 years ago that Africa should integrate. We have not achieved that. With politicians, it may never happen, except you have a platform for effectively engaging the private sector. And that's why we have formed what we call the Pan-African Manufacturers Association, to at least take care of the issues of trading goods. We now have a platform that all manufacturers associations in Africa are coming together to be able to deliberately uh, seek to overcome these challenges. So the, the, the idea is that at the continental level, we are able to engage the African Union. And in our uh, individual economies, we are able to advocate so that our governments will remove those barriers that uh, prevent the effective linkage of our economies. If we leave it to the governments alone and the politicians alone, it will not happen. Because we have had so many agreements in the past. We have had the, I think it's the Lagos uh, Plan of Action. We have had the treaty in Abuja. And all the RECs, the regional economic blocks, they have had plans to get integrated. But you see, when it remains at government levels and it, there's no effective conversation with the private sector, it doesn't work. But this time around, I think, uh, AFCFT had indicated that they should mainstream the participation of the private sector such that we'll be able to work together. Because governments will never have the resources to build roads, for instance, uh, uh, that will link our countries. They will never be able to engage in those uh, trade uh, facilitation infrastructures that will lead to effective trade. So I, I think uh, you have hit the, the, the nail on the head from what I see here. There's a demonstration of uh, political uh, will. I, I don't know if it will matter, but the private sector should be engaged, and we are watching very closely. With this platform, we'll be able to engage governments at different levels, both within our uh, countries and at the continental level. In fact, later uh, this morning, we are going to officially launch the Pan-African Manufacturers Association, 
and then uh, it will be something that will be recognized by the African Union, and we are going to be able to shake hands across borders. Well, we'll wait to see what uh, that the launch of that is going to yield. It does sound like a very good idea, uh, and I believe that it's been thought through. Uh, nonetheless, uh, and it's also very good to see you in Durban. We understand that Nigeria made, uh, as the president said, they went in full force. Uh, and it's yes. good to see just what we have on display in Durban. However, internal challenges remain. Uh, we know the challenges that Nigeria faces by itself in terms of even doing business. Uh, we, we've, we have the presidential uh, panel on ease of doing business. They, we have been able to make some progress, but the challenges remain, starting from our airports. Um, what is the, I, I do not know what the, what is driving your optimism that on your, on your return back home, uh, some of the challenges which you as manufacturers face, sometimes peculiar to us, because so, some other African countries have already dealt with theirs and successfully too. How optimistic are you that, you know, some of the challenges that confront the ease of doing business in Nigeria uh, will be addressed for good? Yes. Uh, thank you. You know, uh, the process of engaging government is a, is a very tough one, uh, I must admit. And sometimes it can be frustrating. But we are gaining traction. Uh, for instance, even while here, we engaged the Nigerian, the government delegation. And we were able to discuss this within the framework of uh, a fairly enlarged uh, platform that brought in business leaders from other parts of, the, uh, of, of Africa. And we were able to, to discuss about how far they have been able to address some of the challenges that the domestic manufacturers are raising. We, we have Nigeria, for instance, uh, has been going up in, in terms of its performance in ease of doing business. But you see, ease of doing business that does not translate to reduction in the cost of doing business. It's not, with due respect, it's not useful because uh, at the end of the day, you allow a business, you facilitate the emergence of a business only for it to collapse under the weight of the cost of doing business. If you are not competitive, your goods will not leave your territory. And if you push them out of your territory, it will remain on the shelf and you will run at a loss. So these are very basic issues that we are engaging government. Fortunately for us, we have a platform the National Action Committee on AFCFT that tends to integrate all ministry departments and agencies of government that are connected with facilitating trade. We are working very closely with them and they are here. So we are also having a conversation that when we get back to Nigeria, it should not be business as usual. We will have seen the progress that is being made in other countries. We need to replicate it in Nigeria. I'm so optimistic and I know that Nigeria will be a major beneficiary in this AFCF, the only if we do the right things, and we know those right things. Government needs to work more with, uh, with the private sector. As we speak, my enthusiasm is only based on what I see coming in the future. Uh, 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 optimism is based on what I know my members, for instance, the manufacturers can do. What I know our service sector in Nigeria can give to Africa. Our stand here is the biggest stand. And when our minister was going around, some other of my friends from Malawi, from Cote d'Ivoire, and so on, they are asking, you guys are intimidating us. Are you the only one that has a minister for industry trade? And, and But he was having a conversation with them as to what needed to be done. So on the face of it, we understand everything. So I think it's just for us to put more action into the understanding that we have. Uh, but going back to Nigeria, I mean, we've had so much exposure, and we are doing it at the same time. The National Action Committee on AFCFT is here. The Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment is here. NEPC is here. MAN is here. And we have so many of our members. So I think that there's a kind of bonding that we have had now that is recharging us so that when we get back to our country, we know what to do to take over Africa. Africa is ours for the taking, and we just have to do the right things.
Mm. While we also, you know, wait to take over Africa, there were initial fears about the AFCFTA. You know, remember that when it was uh, signed initially, Nigeria did not sign on immediately. It took a while for us to sign on uh, to that. And we've also had even our issues with even our regional body, ECOWAS, where we've had to, you know, close our borders as a result of dumping. So th there were fears uh, before Nigeria eventually signed on. Uh, Nigeria looks like the... It, it, as you rightly said, Africa is, is ours for the taking. However, we also know that we have a very virile market. We have a market that is also very attractive uh, to Africa, so to speak. Um, the, the question is, what are we going to be doing now to ensure that we take care of the fears, the initial fears, that our place could be a place where goods are dumped uh, and reverse that to a place where we actually produce and serve other countries? Yes, I mean, man was part of that fear. And because of the fear, we actually commissioned a study. And we looked at 25 African countries vis-a-vis -vis their relationship with uh, Nigeria. Government also did the study. And we had more than 85% correlation in the studies that we did. We will be at the losing end if we do not do A, B, C, D. So government is aware. And we are, like I said, we, we are working with government to be able to overcome those challenges. Nigeria, many people, many of my friends have told me here that in Nigeria that we buy what we like and not what we need. And this is a manufacturer's delight. I mean, you buy so that you'll be able to produce and the economy grows. So we are our best placed, even when you compare with other African countries, except we have people doing trade infractions and do transshipment and so on. Yeah, we, we are not really uh, put too much in a disadvantaged position, but so many African countries are putting their acts right. They are putting the best foot forward. So I think Nigeria should join in that league. We have infrastructure challenge that makes it impossible for us to produce at rates that are competitive. I think those ones are settled matters that we need to immediately address. And like the president said here, the reforms that have been proposed by government are in infrastructure, in power, and so on, uh, they, they, they are there on paper, uh, but we are slow in achieving them. In some cases also, we have had uh, policy inconsistency. I, I think, like I said, we, we seem to have an understanding here that going back to Nigeria, it will not be business as usual. The last time that we had this uh, intra-African trade, that Nigeria, I think, had not signed. So, um, uh, you can see now that we are here. I mean, everybody is looking around to see what Nigeria is going to do. And I think we need to rise to the occasion. Uh, we had our fears. Government knows what should be done to overcome those, those fears. Uh, the government went uh, all over the country in the six geopolitical zones to get inputs. We have the inputs. Uh, they established an action committee on AFCFT. It is established. In fact, man is leaving the manufacturing work stream on that platform. So the, 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 the engagement process is on. All we just need to do is to intensify efforts and to put action to the words that we have. I think it's not only on the government side. The private sector also has to ensure that we give the right support and we insist on certain basic uh, uh, principle, I mean, basic uh, issues that we have to deal with that should not remain a, a, a challenge for us. The incidence of uh, closing borders and the rest is actually very unfortunate. I don't think any country should consider to do that because you, you don't just close your borders. Uh, and at the end of the day, you will see that the government will lose, the people will lose, and relationship will be strained. I pray that Nigeria will never have any reason to, to close this. But I know there are security concerns and the rest. But, you know, in business, uh, life must go on. You, you need to quickly resolve these issues and not resorting to this uh, arbitrary and quite unfriendly uh, uh, trade behavior. You know, um, from those fears that you say you, you have and raised, have you seen any sufficient action on the part of government to address some of them, even if you call them low-hanging fruits? I mean, back home here now. Yes, yeah, sufficient, uh, not really, but uh, the actions are being taken and uh, we hope we'll drive them to fruition. Uh, but whether it's sufficient, uh, I can't answer in the affirmative. I, I can't.
frankly speaking, I can't. I don't know if uh, the president's statement uh, at that same event that you uh, uh, attending right now, I don't know if that statement that he made uh, is in any way some form of suasion for you. Uh, the president was quoted to have said, governments must support local entrepreneurs to build skill and therefore improve productivity. This means providing incentives to encourage our businesses to formalize and comply with laid down regulations. Is, is this in any way uh, assuaging? And if so, what kind of incentives, what kind of support would you be expecting any governments, federal or state or even local, to give to scale up? Yes, I, I think it, it, it does assuage. Uh, because like I said, government is making quite a number of efforts. I mean, we are considering tariff uh, that will support uh, manufacturing. There's reform in the power sector. There is uh, infrastructure incentive, the one that allows you to uh, build infrastructures and get tax breaks and compensations. There are quite a number, but whether it, it is sufficient enough to say that we do not have uh, more challenges, no. I think we need to continue to work on those and expand. Because now, I think uh, with the president being, and he went around all the all the stands in, in, in Nigeria, he even came to man stand and we explained what we are doing. He commended us for uh, uh, spearheading the formation of the Pan-African Manufacturers Association. Okay, these ones are suiting. And I think uh, from what he has seen, it is evident that the market is there for us and that if we do the right things, we will succeed. So I, I think this is just going to give the impetus. Uh, that is needed to expand the reforms uh, that are that are being made and to uh, avoid as much as possible reversals of policies before they deliver the fruits. So I, I think we still have a lot of work to do, but there is comforting to hear Mr. President, and he assured us when he came to our stand, for instance, that the, the priority will be given to addressing the challenges that, that, that we have. My take is that uh, living South Africa, leaving Durban and going back to Nigeria, it will not be business as usual. Uh, don't also forget that uh, the private sector is also getting more and more uh, educated by its uh, interaction across Africa. Uh, we, have, we now have an understanding that all of us will speak the same language uh, when we are addressing our heads of states ahead of the African uh, Union meetings. And even in our regs, we are also strategizing on how to put pressure on government and how to engage uh, the politicians more effectively so that we'll be able to have uh, uh, a developed uh, continent. Because, I mean, I don't think there's any continent in the world that is as endowed as we are. Uh, and it, it just beats me sometimes when I reflect on why we have abandoned all these uh, op opportunities and we continue to seek lesser uh, and more disadvantageous relationship with uh, people outside of the continent. Well, you, you've, raised, you've right. raised, my, my apologies, you, you raised issues about what government needs to do, and that's on the government side. How about the private sector side? You are aware of that report from NAFTAC, for instance, that says that some of our exports were rejected, so uh, b simply because they didn't, you know, rise to power. And there are those pointing fingers at uh, private sector practitioners, producers, manufacturers, small and medium enterprises, not going through the proper process of exporting. So what kind of conversations will man be having with its members, <coughs> excuse me, in order to ensure that they also follow the due process of getting things done? Because unless that is done as well, it's going to cast a passion on those who are doing wonderfully well. Yeah. Uh, in a general sense, the private sector, you know, is, is very large. Uh, in, uh, and since you asked about man specifically, we have a man export group. We call it MANEG. And we have constant engagement with regulatory agencies. We interact with our counterparts from all over uh, Africa and even in the world. We do not have that kind of challenge particularly those that are in man export group. But I would like to address the issue generally. 
There has to be education. Nigeria is not the only country that has its exports be, being rejected. Of course, if you are exporting to a country, you need to, you need to know the standard that is accepted here. In the first instance, we also have our standards organization in Nigeria. We have SON, we have NAVDAC, and, and so on and so forth. So we, it, most of those products don't even satisfy the local standards before they are exported. And if you want to export, they will give you advice on what is acceptable in those countries. You just need to comply. So if there are some maybe traders or some producers that are exporting without uh, following the uh, laid down regulations, I mean, you will, you, I mean, then they are not in business. But this is not to say that we don't have uh, countries that deliberately keep try to keep our goods out. Not because we have not made the standard, but they are raising uh, non uh, tariff barriers that will hinder our export. There's also this uh, uh, offensive uh, trade diplomacy that some countries engage in. So I do not want to absorb uh, Nigerians, but I will just encourage that one, it is necessary for you to follow the uh, follow the standards, and we have the capacity to do so. So it is only those that are probably not uh, um, uh, aware, and All I right. don't think we have a member in mind that is not aware of this. Okay, uh, Mr. Kade, just give us a couple of minutes, just one more item. We know you need to catch up with the next item uh, for your schedule. Just one more matter when we return from the break, and uh, we'll wrap it up. So don't go away. Uh, as we conclude on this matter, you know, there are those who equally raise concerns as to external interference, perhaps making use of uh, maybe some African leaders to scuttle this plan for Africa to trade and enhance trade amongst themselves, which is a huge, huge quantity in terms of the financial benefits. So do you have concerns? Is this something that anyone should be concerned about? And if so, what would your recommendations be as to how that should be approached? Yes, thank you. I think it's a very, very concerning matter. Even for more mature uh, uh, economic zones and in the other free trade area areas around the world, even in the uh, European Union, so uh, it's a concerning matter. And uh, especially in Africa, where you have economies that are weak and easily susceptible to uh, manipulations by more advanced economies. So uh, uh, the, 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 the problem is there. But we have indicated that the best way to tackle this matter is to have a rule of origin protocol that protects the uh, African economies. So you are able to determine which good is originating from which country. So far, uh, we have achieved 87% of the negotiation in that area, the uh, rule of origin. That was uh, mentioned, I think, uh, the day before yesterday, yes, it was on Monday, by the Secretary General of the AFCFT Secretariat. Uh, so we have achieved 87% of the more than 5,000 uh, uh, tariff lines. So it will be possible for us to determine effectively how, uh, we, I mean, where the goods are coming from. And I think that's the fundamental issue. The additional issue that uh, we need to do in our various countries is to ensure that we have the capacity to be able to enforce it. In fact, that was the issue that I mentioned to the Secretary General uh, before he, I mean, before we parted on Monday, that it is critically important for the AFCFT sector to have the capacity to enforce this rule of origin. And where you also have a dispute, the dispute resolution mechanism should be effective, fast, and there should be should come with some finality that will allow you to have redress immediately. So trade infraction happens everywhere, but you need to take steps to make sure that you minimize it. Uh, and I think that is one area that Nigeria really, really, really needs to uh, uh, put its uh, uh, foot down, that it must be done. And I think the president, uh, our president, President Buhari, also mentioned it yesterday, 
that it would be important that the goods that are traded in Africa should be goods that are made in Africa, not uh, people engaging in uh, such trade infractions and bringing it from third countries and to, to come and overwhelm uh, our, our indigenous uh, uh, companies. I, I think that is critically important and is of concern. It's been mentioned in so many conversations around here that we need to, first of all, we need to talk to ourselves and make, uh, make us believe in the uh, sanctity of the African market. It's a 1.2 billion uh, people market. It will be attractive to all those trade scavengers around the world. So, I mean, it will be tested and we, uh, Africa has to rise up to the occasion. I think that's going to be one of the biggest uh, uh, challenges that uh, uh, my friend Wam Kelly is, is, going to, is going to meet, and I've told him so. Yes. All right, so uh, let's wind down with this one now. And in furtherance of the uh, question and concerns to ensure that this is not circumvented, for instance, if um, maybe an external body or Western or foreign countries or manufacturers coming to Africa, begin to manufacture in Africa and then repatriate their funds. How do we approach that? Can we tell them not to repatriate their funds or what? Yeah, I, I think it will have to depend on the individual country's uh, uh, policy on uh, trade with the industrial policy. And this brings up the question as to why in Nigeria, for instance, we do not still have an industrial and trade policy that we guide how we relate with people, whether they are investors uh, in, in country or they are foreign direct investors or they are portfolio investors. What are they entitled to? What is the economy going to gain? Are they going to be able to export all the, repatriate all the profit and so on and so forth? But I mean, we need to have that conversation. And across Africa, uh, one cannot, I don't think it's possible to have a general uh, approach to it. Though when we integrate, we can influence each other. It depends on how hungry you are or what your ambition is or what your aspiration is. If you are desperately in need of bringing in foreign capital, it may reduce, I mean, it may lessen your capacity to determine how much of the profit can be repatriated. So I think, again, it depends on the level of your development and the strength of your negotiation are in different countries. But well, I think it is critically important for us to have uh, our investment uh, laws across the, the region uh, support the retention of, uh, of profit within the continent. All right, uh, Mr. Shagun Ajayi Kriye, Director General, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me.